Okay, and so for today's session with uh, Micromation GS1 US and VChain, uh, we'd like to ask everyone to please remain on mute and hold any questions until the end. And then we will open up for questions during a Q&A session. To ask a question, uh, could you please raise your hand to be unmuted or drop your question uh, in the chat uh, for David and Nick, and uh, we'll make sure that, uh, that they see it and answer. Uh, without further ado, uh, here are David and Nick. Great. Thanks, Bill. Hi, my name is David Smith. I'm the president of Micromation. Micromation is a leading provider of uh, innovative storytelling uh, capability. We specialize in tracking supply chain movement of products and as well assets through their life cycle. And we do this through our flagship service called True Storyteller. And the idea is, is that we help customers using engaging uh, the technologies like blockchain to tell the, the story that uh, what makes their products unique and interesting. And in doing so, empower them to create transparency in what they do and what they offer and provide uh, a way that, that builds trust and loyalty with their customers. Nick, uh, tell us about GS1. Hi. I'm Nick Latwis. I work as an innovation manager at GS1 US. GS1 is a not-for-profit standards organization that develops and maintains the world's most widely used supply chain standards. So for decades, about 50 years now, we have worked to provide a common language for businesses to uniquely identify, capture, and share information about their products, their locations, their assets, and more across their supply chains. Uh, my specific focus as an innovation manager is understanding emerging technology and its use cases, which is why I'm here today to talk about traceability solutions with David. And I'd also like to uh, talk a little bit about VChain. VChain is a company that provides very innovative blockchain technology and track and trace technology. I'm a partner with VChain as well as VChain is a partner, a solution partner with uh, GS1. So they provide these platforms that show the end-to-end -end movement of products and how they are transformed and who the different stakeholders are throughout the entire supply chain. And it is the foundation in which we're able to tell these stories and be able to show things right from seed to product or from grain to glass or from, you know, cow to burger. It, it, it's just amazing what we're able to track. You know, the funny thing is, is that understanding and, and tracking how the supply chain works, it's it's a lot of hide and seek and forensic analysis. And with these digital storing tools and services that we now have, it's like having Sherlock Holmes, you know, in your pocket to help your customers understand what's going on. What I'd like to do is maybe start with by showing one of our slides here about what is supply chain traceability. So, um, Bill, if you could put up the first slide here. Uh, this slide here shows the depiction of, you, you know, right from the raw material, you know, where the source of things came from, you know, re regardless of what type of uh, product that you have, it could be food related, it could, it could be physical products, could be assets, uh, could be even mining materials. But the journey of the raw materials, you know, goes through many different hands. Uh, there's transporting and warehousing and, and then you know transforming that product or the raw materials into various products through either manufacturing or farming or or bottling packaging and, and often there are other regulators or or standards which have to be met and they're audited and so we've got verification services and then eventually you've got a consumer that wants to understand you know where did this product come from is was it ethically produced was it how was it sourced um is it real is it authentic and so all of this information can be recorded easily now on technology like a blockchain and that's where the vchain tool chain comes into play because it allows different parties to come together and put information immutably onto a blockchain permanently and it's like a ledger it's like a a way to record the systematic 
step-by-step -step methods that are used to create the various products. So, you know, why do we care about this? What are the problems that it can help solve? Well, number one is, is that today without these types of technologies, we, we lack transparency and seeing what happens end to end. And if you can imagine trying to run like a clinical trial where you're, you're, you're testing the efficacy of, of new drugs, perhaps, and you want to know, you know, various dosages or uh, methods of applying these to different blind studies versus uh, different techniques, you know, did they work or, or didn't they? And, and if they did work, you know, what was the uh, exact method that was used? So, you know, this is a case where you can show end-to-end -end visibility of every step of the way who was involved and how things were, were handled. Other situations are, you know, anti-counterfeiting. A lot of products uh, are at risk that, you know, you might put a lot of energy into um, research and development and producing new product like a EV product or maybe a, a, you know, a really good bottle of wine and you put it out in the market and next thing you know, somebody's copied your label, they've copied the e-vape and in 30 days, they've got a knockoff product, you know, fraction of the price and it's, you know, competing against you and, and, and um, you know, taking up market share. But what about, you know, food safety and, and recall management? Like I've seen lots of situations where things like simple things like lettuce uh, you know, cause an outbreak of listeria. And then without good, you know, traceability measures, you have to destroy, you know, you know, half the country's supply of lettuce because you couldn't tell where it came from. So we have to destroy the, the um, you know, the food that's on the shelf. Or what about if your ingredients that you're using have shelf life and they need to be used within a certain time frame? And if you're not tracking or, or on top of it, efficiently from an inventory management point of view, then there's a lot of waste or maybe hazards that things become contaminated. So this can happen as well. And then you have other situations where you've got regulators that are you know, very tough standards that you need to meet. We've got examples, I'm in mean, Canada. We've got uh, Health Canada has very rigorous cannabis uh, you know, reporting that every, um, Step of the way, and every product that you produce, whether it's a seed, flower, flowering plant, or whatever, you have to document it in step by step. And so, it's a lot of rigor that goes into this. So, at the end of the day, by having you know a a storytelling method that records this in a fruitful manner, we can show where things came from and what the provenance was, and we can help brands protect themselves from other counterfeiters and put, um, you know, confidence, you know, there for the consumer that they know that they're getting the, the real authentic products and they can feel safe about, you know, having, you know, the right food or, or safety practices in place and, and see through attestations and other verifiers that things in fact uh, were, you know, done to a, to a standard and that it meets regulatory compliance. So, Nick, maybe you can give us some other examples of the, the kind of features and benefits that, that you see as well through GS1. Sure, David. Thanks. I'm going to talk about some of these key features, benefits, um, and advantages. As you can see on the slide, we got five things here. I'm going to go through each one and talk a little bit more about it. So, first, we start with digitization. Here we're talking about the secure storage of data at any point in a product's supply chain. This is something David touched on when he was talking. It's about ensuring tamper-proof records through the use of technologies like a blockchain or like verifiable credentials. This is important both for the internal storage and kind of cybersecurity and maintaining everything both within the house of your business, but it's also about how you ensure that data is shared safely between trading partners using secure standardized protocols and electronic data interchanges. So we have this first step, the verify, verified data that is foundational to the other services on this slide. So with the data secured for digitization, we can shift towards visibility. Here we're really focusing on real-time product tracking and data. This is done via, again, 
data sharing to provide up-to-date information about a product any point in its life cycle. This is key for real-time insights. This is what allows inventory management to be done correctly. This is what allows for demand planning to be as accurate as possible for what you're trying to do. But it's also essential to have historical uh, visibility data. This is, again, what David mentioned before, where you can access the archival data in the event of a product recall and trace it back to a product's origin, figuring out what's safe to eat and also what is been compromised and being able to delineate between the two so you don't have to throw out everything. Um, really here, the more seamless the communication, the more accurate the tracking, and therefore the more efficient your operations overall. So between storing the data, securing the data, and sharing the data, there's a lot of activity, a lot of digital activity going on here. And this is where automation comes in. Automation is really essential to ensure these processes run smoothly. You can use things like artificial intelligence and predictive analytics to improve the operational efficiency of these processes and really cut down costs um, by taking away some of that manual data entry or that manual curation when you can automate it. Um, it also helps with insights to enhance your decision making. When everyone, every trading partner is really using these types of solutions, there is a wealth of product data being shared along the supply chain that can fuel a lot of analytics and insights uh, for your business. And of course, in the automation section, I would be remiss here if I didn't talk about generative AI. There's a proliferation of solutions built on this technology that are working to push the boundaries of what can be automated and what can be improved to really bring all of these facets together into a coherent digital ecosystem. So those are really the main features and advantages. And now I'm just gonna to touch briefly on the two of the main benefits that I think come out of these solutions. One is authenticity, which is really closely tied to the digitization and visibility. It's being able to secure something and being able to see it. Here, storing data on a blockchain or using verifiable credentials and sharing it with a trusted partner goes a long way towards reducing the risk of counterfeits and ensuring that they aren't polluting the supply chain or eroding your brand's reputation. This can also improve the ease of regulatory compliance and ensure that your certifications, your lab results, your nutrition labels, and your other product information can be readily validated by these third parties. But also when they then give you your certification or turn, you can securely store it and share it with anyone interested and they can have confidence that it is authentic what they are receiving. And finally, transparency is about how we bring this all together to share your authenticated product information through things like QR codes or RFID tags, through digital storytelling on brand's website, through other options. You know, you can bring it all together to create a product narrative for your customer, both at a retail end, the end customer, but really any customer throughout the supply chain, any trading partner that you want to have confidence in your brand. So transparency is about building credibility for your reputation and building trust with whichever partner you choose to engage with. Once they can see what's going on for themselves, it will really work to instill a sense of confidence in your company and in your brand. So that's a lot to keep track of that I just went over. I think David has a good way to kind of summarize the value proposition here. Yeah, so to kind of summarize what we think the value proposition here is by looking at this is that the track and trace services really, you know, underpinned by blockchain technology give you a new way to provide that end-to-end -end visibility, which helps enhance the, you know, the security and the seamlessness of providing data upstream and downstream to your trading partners, as well as to your consumers, right across the entire supply chain. And that is possible by using you know, the notion of storytelling or you know, building and telling the, you know, the narrative of what you do that makes you different and special so that you can showcase your offerings and capabilities to your to your customers and, and and retain them um you know by building that trust and loyalty with them so i think maybe a good way to kind of illustrate this nick is let, let's let's talk through maybe an example here yeah so to david's point we're going to tell a quick story so to ground all of this that we've been discussing so far by looking at a specific supply chain. In this case, we're looking at CBD products, something me and David have worked on in the past. Um, 
I'm not going to name a specific company here. I'm just going to ask you to imagine, if you will, a CBD oil manufacturer that has decided to use track and trace services to improve their business, to track their products from seed to sale. So going left to right across here, we're going to start with the cultivation stage. Here, the company uses traceability software to track their seeds and confirm that they are sourced from verified sustainable farms. They can use this information that is embedded in the packaging, like a QR code or an RFID tag, as you can kind of see on the screen, to confirm this digital identity and ensure it is an authentic one as they put it into their own system. Once they confirm it, once they confirm the digital identity matches the physical one, they plant the product and you know time passes, it grows. Finally, they harvest the plants, they re-tag them as needed, and once again, confirm the digital identity matches the physical one before sending it on to the next step in the process. From here, you get to extraction and the processing phases. This is where a lot of the transformation takes place, and this is where each step is tracked and recorded on a blockchain. As this product is transformed, the information is then shared with the next business, you know, down the line. For example, looking at kind of this first extraction process, you see there are multiple plants being taken here. They're going to be aggregated into a single distillation of CBD oil. And so you take the group of digital identities and then you now link it to a single um, oil digital identity in order to create that chain of custody, that chain of product provenance between the two. And you do so as it's brought from, you know, oil to bottle, bottle to package, all the way through. Um, while this is happening, the lab results and the certifications that happen at each transformation to ensure it's being done safely, it's being done correctly, can then be digitized, stored, and linked to the product. This allows the digital inter information to flow alongside the physical product as it moves down the supply chain into the last step we have here, which is finally the retail stage. This is where the consumer storytelling really takes off. Here, traceability data, the aforementioned lab results, certifications, information about sustainability practices, about ethical sourcing, and other key information that you have gleaned from early in the process can be embedded into the product, usually, as you see here, a QR code. These can be, as we all know, scanned by any consumer with a smartphone to learn more about the product. And openly sharing this data, as this oil manufacturer has done, really works to alleviate any concerns or questions that the consumer might have about the product's quality, product safety, and even the risk of buying a counterfeit product by mistake. So once they have this information in the palm of their hand, they can really make an informed decision about buying this product. So we have now created a transparent supply chain that can be used to create an immersive narrative that builds up a brand's reputation and increases, increases trust with the customer. And now David here is going to take us a step further and kind of ground this with a quick demo of one of these traceability solutions in action. Yeah, so taking you know the same concept here, uh, we, we've put together a story which we're going to illustrate for you using a blockchain tool. Uh, there's some QR codes you'll notice at the bottom of the screen here. On the bottom left-hand corner, if you scan that, you'll get uh, a PDF with uh, the description of you know exactly what we've walked you through. And on the bottom right-hand corner, you can actually you know have the user experience of what it would feel like to scan with your phone and, and kind of see what it looks like to a, a consumer to you know see the product itself and be able to trace backwards but i'll walk you through it how it works so the first step is when we're building the story we we all want to understand well who are the players involved what are the locations and uh how do they interact with one another so bill if you could click on the button we'll kind of show the arrows as we walk through this You've got a grower in this situation, uh, an extraction refinery, a uh, packaging plant, and then a retailer. So they are the different parties that are involved in this. And then there's the actual process itself in which we take raw materials, which is right from the seeds to the hemp plants, which then are you know dried and crushed and put into um, you know, different forms and then eventually extracted for getting the liquids from it and maybe even adding other things like coloring flavoring and, and putting it into you know certain size bottles or dimensions and packages 
So, so these are like product offerings that transform and move through the different uh, parties across the supply chain. And as this is taking place, you know, certain types of products are heavily regulated and need to be tested. So this is where different testing labs, in this case, can be involved at different stages throughout the, the, uh, the, the supply chain process and testing the quality, uh, the strength, the uh, the purity of the of the various products as they move through the different supply chain. Now I'm going to uh, switch screens here, and um, I'm going to uh, show my screen. And just give me a moment here. Uh, I've got a demo. which I'm gonna call up here. And the best way to, to share this, this concept with you of how we actually do it and how we build the story, I'm showing you my, uh, my toolbox that I use here. This is called Toolchain. This is the VChain platform. And in here, I've got the ability that I can build a storyline that follows exactly what the supply chain looks like. In this situation, we're talking about hemp and CDB or CBD oil. So we have things like SKUs and cultivation and harvesting and processing, the storage, bottling, inspection, and then we can batch things and uh, you know trace them as they move forward. And once we put the storyline together, we produce a trackable code like a QR code, or you can use chip technology like near field uh, communications chips that you can put on each individual bottle or carton or package. And you can scan it right, just with simple mobile technology and then be able to find out exactly what this product is all about. So I, I just simulated here scanning the product's QR code. And the first thing I see is, is the, the product that's sitting on the shelf right now, which in that case just happens to be a, a, an extract that you can buy in a bottle. But embedded in here, you'll notice that it's got information like what the GTIN number is. This is a universal number, a standard that's provided by GS1. And as well as, you know, what companies involved, and that's got a specific location identifier called a GLN. And then we can tell exactly, you know, where did this come from? And when did it get here? And what is it? And so there's details about the actual product itself. And, and this is where storytelling comes into play because it's up to you to determine you know, what and how you want to tell the story. And in this case, we wanted to show the, the capability of tracking right from that end product all the way back to the actual plant or the seed that it came from. So I can show and put connections in here that says, well, where did the source materials come from in this case? Well, they came from these other bottles that were you know, larger bottles, which were used to produce the smaller batches. And then those bottles came from a packaging company. And how they made it is, is they took other uh, ingredients and bind them together to produce different flavorings that were involved in this. And so they packaged different variants of it. In our simple case, we're just using that they had a red version and a green version. But in any case, we can show the distinction between those and even show uh, as an example that there was a lab certification analysis that was done at this stage that showed that, that it was tested, and that it met certain criteria and, and it passed. Now, again, they, these are simulations um, that we're, we're showing you, but this is all retained in here to show that you know it was verified at a particular location at a, at a, at a point in time and then it actually passed that particular test. Now, if I wanna step back further and say, well, where did this come from? Where did these extracts come from? I can then trace it back further and find out, oh, well, they came from what we call pure intermediaries. And these are you know, where we, in a facility, extract uh, you know, from other materials, the liquids that come uh, you know, into a liquid form. But those materials, if I step back further, they came from hemp pucks. Pucks were just compressed, uh, you know, hemp product, which was, you know, put into a, a, a compressor and compressed into small pucks. 
and so that it was concentrated. And then those clucks as well uh, came from, and again, I'm just stepping back all the way through the storyline. It came from a, a drying facility that, you know, packaged um, these plants, dried them over a period of time in a drying room. And uh, we can see the date and the time and all of that and how much it weighed and, and, and the method that they used to transform that. And then I can even go back further and say, well, where did those materials come from? And now I'm right back to the seed. I'm showing that these came from seeds that were in a particular harvest uh, that came originally from a seed room. Those seeds possibly were from a previous harvest. And so you can just keep on going and going. So if you can imagine that, that with this ability, you can track anything from grain to, to glass, from grape to bottle, from cow to, to burger, um, it, it's possible to tell the stories. You can even go beyond that and you can tell um, if something was recycled and made into a different product, hey, maybe that's important because you wanna know if it was recycled, were there any hazardous materials that might've um, you know, been in the source materials that I need to be aware of uh, from a safety perspective. So these are different things that uh, you're able to, to do and see with the ability to, um, you know, track and trace forward and backward through this. And I, and I didn't show you here, but I, I will, that there's even the ability to kind of geostamp physically where in the world that this happened when you take um, and register these events. So you'll notice here that there's a little marker here. It's on a map, which you can, you know, expand it. It doesn't tell you exactly uh, the geo information here, but it, the data is collected, so it is available for us. So that's my example uh, of um, of the demo. And at this point, I think what we'd like to do is is to um, hand the control back over to to Bill. I'm going to pass it over and um, see if at this point if there's any questions that you might have, um, as well as. If you want to learn more, uh, there is a QR code, which will pop up here in a moment. Here it is. That if you really want to find out, well, what does this mean to you and your business? And how would you track and trace your products? Uh, what we've set up is a free consultation and a demo that if you just scan this QR code, uh, you'll go to a, a, my calendar and you can book directly with me a time slot that we can talk one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And or you know the the h the uh url is, is here as well so that goes to my website and it's you know appointment booking service that you can you know register a free demonstration or a consultation um one-on-one -on -one with me we'll talk through how this might work in your your situation and the problems that it might help solve okay so David, we had a question that came in from adrian a little bit earlier via chat who it's actually a two-part question uh, one, are there similarities to the true storytelling platform and uh, DMV's My Story? And two, uh, how do these brand stories get told? Is it mostly data or are there images? Uh, is it up to manufacturers to upload information to true storyteller? Yes, uh, great question. Uh, okay, true storyteller in by nature, conceptually, is very similar to the DMV My Story. Um, it is the, the same method in which we we consult with you to learn, you know, what is your story? What is your supply chain? Who are the parties involved? And we have a method that we take people through. So we have a, a methodology that we use in True Storyteller that uh, steps through all the different stages that we go through to build the story. And it starts with what are your goals and objectives, who is your target market and customers that you're dealing with. And what are the kinds of problems or uh, situations that can arise in your 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 circumstance that would be better served with you know transparency in these types of tools? So we use that method, and it's a combination of recording not only text but also pictures, videos. Um, people are very visual these days, so the more um, pictures that you can put on in your story or and and build the narrative uh I, I think it's more 
friendly for the, the, the users to 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 um to go through your story so you can record videos files pictures you can have picture galleries and text and web links uh to name you know some of the basic things as well as geo stamps uh dps coordinates those types of things as well okay other questions Looks like there's another one in the chat. Okay. So here we've got uh, from Manu, uh, writing on any blockchain requires private keys. Oh, I lost the, the chat. Um, He's saying who manages the keys? How does one know if they're probably secured? How does one know who used the key to sign something on the blockchain, whether it was an authorized person? And then how do you control access, revoke or invalidate fake data on the blockchain? So it seems Great. like it's access to the, the keys. Great. Okay. So um, when I when I showed you the little demo here and you saw in the background, I was using something called Toolchain. Toolchain is um, provided by VChain, and you can think of it as like blockchain as a service. It is a cloud-based uh, solution which allows you to go in and build your storyline. And in doing so, not only do you set up the steps of the, the flow of how products move from different uh, locations or suppliers to the consumer, but you also control who has access to it and who has permissions to uh, view, edit, or update uh, information on the blockchain. So it, it's made very, very user-friendly and simple uh, because it just feels like you're using an application to kind of build the records and put the data in there and control who can uh, have access to that. And in the background, it has all the APIs, which are dealing with the, 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 the keys to write the information onto the blockchain. Uh, there's two ways that we write things. We write things onto... Um, a pure blockchain in the sense of what the chronology of events are and are encoded and handled in the back end through tool chain. And as well for all the other uh, items like artifacts, like the, the files, the pictures, the videos and all of that, they are stored on uh, Amazon Web Services. And so that's where the, um, you know, the visual content also is, is stored. And then things are hashed together. So they use hashing uh, and cryptology to link the two together so that, that um, the blockchain knows where the pictures are and which ones belong to you know, what events. But this is all managed by, by tool chain and, and it's very simple and easy to use. And that's the beauty of it is, is that it, it's, um, it, it, it's made very easy for people to get up and running within a Within a couple of weeks, you can have this up and running with your products. And so you don't have to be a master wizard of understanding how blockchains work and smart contracts. I mean, that's all handled by tool chain. I know saw another question come up. Um, okay, so this is... Um, so the private keys are managed in the cloud. How does anyone know that they have not been hacked or compromised? um great question how would you know that um i i'm i'm not sure that i could answer that myself uh this, if somebody hacked it how would i know I, 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 great question i i would have to uh speak with vchain to figure out how that might work um can't answer that directly but i know that uh through password management and everything, I use Toolchain. Toolchain manages all the backend blockchain for me. So um, that part I know is managed through a network of companies. There's even one different companies that manage the blockchain that this all resides on. And so they provide the validation services through a proof of authority um, kind of, of um, security measure. And it's not proof of work, it's proof of authority. So these are corporations that run that network and they are 
global in nature. So um, there are large organizations that are throughout the, the globe that man those particular service that, that provide the um, the uh, security on, on that blockchain. Okay, did I see another question pop up there? Okay. Um, did we get them all? I believe we did, David. Okay. Well, if uh, if there isn't any other questions, I guess at this point we'll bid you adieu. And thank you very much for attending today. And look forward to speaking with you. Please, you know, click on that QR code or or scan it with your phone. Uh, we'll also be putting this video recording up on YouTube and and making it available for people to watch uh, later as well. So maybe. If you know somebody that could use this technology, you know, please, you know, forward it or pass it on. Uh, would really appreciate that. And thank you for your time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.